generation after generation will need to live on board, on a ship in the most hostile environment imaginable. Deep space. No air, no gravity. Trillions of miles of nothingness. How will we ever survive on this journey? Our imaginary deep space quest is fleeing Earth. For a new home among the stars. We've found the right planet. Now we just have to get there. Fastening our seatbelts for takeoff, we ask, can we survive this journey? Our first challenge comes almost at once. Losing a force that has shaped us all our lives, gravity. Back home, every movement is a struggle against gravity. Needing strong bones just to stay upright and powerful muscles to move us around. It even teaches us what's up and what's down. Jane Houston, you are go for orbit, go for orbit. Heading for orbit, we hit zero gravity. Floating gracefully, life in space seems easy. But without gravity, we are like fish out of water. Our newfound strength is an illusion. Our muscles are wasting away. We have the thrill of being a Superman. All of a sudden we can lift gigantic instruments, all of a sudden we can perform dazzling feats, even as we're becoming weaklings. In 1983, to study the effects of reduced gravity, Dr. Norm Thagard embarked on the U.S. Space Shuttle he noticed his body altering. His muscles were shrinking away. I lost about 20% of the muscle mass from the calf muscles and about 10% from the thighs. And your heart's a muscle, so it will get weaker as well. The absence of gravity weakens our muscles and leeches the strength from our bones. Because bones stop growing in zero gravity. Back on Earth, Every time we run or walk, the impact triggers fresh bone tissue growth. In space, that trigger is missing. You can measure this effect by staying in bed. Total bed rest is as close to zero gravity as you can easily get. In 2005, NASA immobilized volunteers for three months to weaken their muscles and bones. Raising their feet makes blood rush to their heads, as it does in space. A little uncomfortable. It takes a little getting used to. It's hard to sleep at night sometimes. And physically, it, it, it's difficult to, uh, to move around, to brush your hair at this angle, to, uh, to eat at this angle. It's as, about as close as I can get to be an astronaut without actually doing it. Within days, their bones are less dense. But it's not all bad. For a special treat, they get to go outside. Pretending to be in space for just a few weeks affects our test subjects. How would they cope for a year? Some Russian astronauts have spent that long in space. Returning to Earth, they no longer have the strength to stand in gravity. They're almost like a bug crawling on the surface of the Earth, trying to regain their strength. And if it's that bad that quickly, how would we cope? We will be in space for generations. If current predictions are anything to go by, a year into our journey, a young male astronaut's leg looks normal. But underneath, he might have lost 15% of his bone density. Two years later, as we approach Jupiter, a fall could easily result in a fracture. And by Saturn, a pat on the back could crush his spine. And there's hundreds of years still to go. We need a way of bringing gravity with us. <laughs> 